What if the best note-taking app was on your phone all along? Let me just make one thing clear. I use Notion for work and for real note-taking, I only use Apple Notes. Many people see Notes as a simple app that has no features, but did you know that instead of typing the text manually, you can just scan it. When you have your note opened, tap on the camera icon, choose scan text, and then just point camera at the text. The phone will then scan the text and you will see preview of it in the note up top. Then you just press insert and you're done. Super fast and super easy. Well, sure, sometimes you can make mistakes in text recognition, but if you want to copy a part of the document, this is the fastest way to do it. If you want, you can also attach an image to your note. You can either choose it from the photo library or take it from within the note app. If you want, you can freely draw over the photo, place a signature on top of it, and so on. By default, all images or uploaded files will look huge and take almost all screen real estate. But if I just long press in the image and click view as, I will be able to choose the size of an image, large or small. For images, there are only two sizes, but for PDF files or document scans, you can also select a medium size. Scanning documents is something everyone does, but not that many people know that for any scan file, you can choose a style or a filter, such as grayscale or black and white. You can also manually adjust the corners of the document, and to do it, you don't have to tap on the corner itself, just tap and hold the corresponding quarter of the display. This way, your finger won't obstruct the view. The Notes app is available in all Apple devices, and all of those devices need to be charged, preferably fast and safe. And right here, I have the world's most powerful 2-in-1 power bank from the sponsor of today's video, Alhai, called Starship. With a capacity of 40,000 million powers, this power bank is like a mini power station you can carry in your bag. It's designed to keep you going for days without constant worry of finding a power source, and it's really small, especially given the capacity of this battery. Compatibility is another strong side of Starship, it features three USB-C ports and one USB-A port, making it versatile enough to charge a wide range of devices, from smartphones and tablets to laptops that usually demand more power. What sets it apart is its clever design for desktop charging mode, which allows it to charge devices without the power passing through the power bank's own battery. This way, all the batteries are protected and suffer much less damage from charging. The Alhai Starship power bank really packs a punch when it comes to charging your gadgets quickly. With its power delivery 3.1 support, you can get up to 140 watts from its USB-C ports. I can charge my MacBook, my iPhone, and my watch all at the same time. And it will charge all of them super fast. So no matter where I am, with Alhai Starship, my devices will always be charged to the max. I will leave a link to it in the description, so be sure to check it out. But the true organization power of Apple Notes comes from folders. Braden folders is the best way to keep things organized. It's so convenient to have separate folders for work, personal notes, document scans. To create a folder, I just click here, type in the name and hit done. And the best part is that for each folder, I can create subfolders. This all sounds like a simple file system, but boy, does it make a difference. I know the true productivity geeks out there will say that all of this is crap and that Notion does all the same things, but better. And I have no intention of arguing with that. Notion is for sure more powerful, but Apple Notes have something that Notion doesn't, simplicity and intuitiveness. And grouping everything into folders for most people is far easier than creating databases and all that. You can also sort and group the notes based on different parameters. And if you want a bit more than just folders, there are also tags. For years, notes was a folder focused app, but now I can just put tags in, in any note and then sort the notes by these tags. It's super convenient. Here, I'm gonna create a couple notes with different tags and then go to the root and sort notes easily. But you can go even further. There is a thing called smart folders and they allow you to automatically filter your notes based on specific criteria you choose, not only by a combination of tags, but also by other notes properties. For example, if you use checklists to track tasks in your notes, you can create a smart folder that filters all the notes with open checklist items, and the folder will get updated automatically. This can be really useful for staying organized and making sure that you don't overlook any pending tasks, or you can create smart folders for notes with tags, which is also convenient. There are many ways to build your own custom system. Next up, taking handwritten notes. For any note, you can turn on grids and lines and then write on top of them. This feature is best for iPad users. And on iPhones, you won't be able to scribble anything. However, 
However, if you like to draw, you can draw from your phone. Let's uh, draw a face. I will just roughly draw a circle, hold the finger, and the phone will automatically turn that into a perfect circle. This works with all shapes and even with arrows. A very convenient way to precisely draw doodles. Now, when it comes to actual checklists, notes are once again keeping it simple. In apps like Notion, you can build a whole system of relations between items on a checklist, turn each element into an embedded note and so on. Here, you just do a checklist and that's all. Item after item, one by one. This list does look super simple and the only thing you can do with it is to check the check boxes. But from a regular person's standpoint, that's all you need. When we take notes and paper, we don't do embedded pages. We just write a list of things and then draw an X on top of them. Here's the same story. Sure, it would be nice to have more functionality here, but at least notes are easy to understand. Notion for a regular person would be a nightmare to master, but notes, even my dad uses them as frequently as I do. He's 56. But even with these simple checklists, Apple managed to insert a feature that you didn't know about. You can select any text in your checklist and translate it to any language. And the best part is that you don't need to manually type in the translated text with just one click it will get replaced automatically. And you can embed links into text just like you would do in Pages or Google Docs. It can be super convenient if you're creating a guide for travel, for example. One more feature that most people overlook when using notes is tables. By clicking here, and here, you can insert a table. Its default size is two by two, but you can easily add more rows or columns. For example, it can be a table with birthdays and people's age, if you're like me and don't want to bother remembering that. Of course, any piece of text in notes can be formatted. You can make it bold, underlined, and even move it to the right or left side of the note. These are little things, but that's how you build truly personalized notes. But we're still not done. Remember how we used to insert photos into notes a while back? Well, there's another way to do it just drag and drop. When I am in my photos app, I can just select an element of the photo and drag and drop it into the note. I can do the same with images and even links when I'm in Safari. You can also pin certain notes to the top of the list or even lock them with a passcode or face ID. I, for example, prefer to lock any notes that have sensitive information in them, such as a list of Christmas presents. But by far, one of the most useful features is Quick Notes. Quick Notes allows you to create notes in a couple of clicks from anywhere without fully opening the notes app. For example, when you're browsing the web and want to create a note with the article you're reading, just press the share icon and choose create quick note. The note will pop up with a link already embedded. The same goes for photos in your library. Almost anything that can be shared can be used inside a quick note. But the most interesting way to use quick notes is from the control center. If you don't have the button for it, go to settings, control center and add quick notes. Now, regardless of where you are, you can just pull down the control center and create a quick note. This is the fastest way to take notes for sure. And if you are on a web page and create a quick note from the control center, the note will suggest you to embed a link of the website you're on. So super convenient. On Macs, quick notes are even more powerful, mainly because you can pin the quick note to the corners of the screen and whenever you need, just pull it out. It's a really neat way to store quick access data, such as uh, names, dates, and other stuff. Apple Notes might not be the most advanced or feature-rich note-taking app out there, but it's definitely the most user-friendly one. Learning how to use it takes only a couple of minutes, and after watching this video, you already are a pro at that. Apple's Notes, in my opinion, is the true way to go if you're a digital minimalist or an hate clutter of any sort, clean, fast, and functional just what I like. But to use them, you need an Apple device. And to buy one, you need to know what to buy. And we just made a video where we gave a comprehensive list of all Apple tech that you shouldn't buy. So be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching and see you soon.